Hi everyone, so this is Unit 4, Lesson 3, uh, Quadratic Relations of the Form Y equals A times X minus R uh, times X minus S. So um, just like in the previous lesson 4.2, we said we had quadratic relations of the form y equals to x minus h, uh, sorry, a times x minus h squared plus k. Um, we had that equation. We can also say that that is vertex form. So the name of that is actually vertex form. So the name of this is factored form. So we can also call this lesson uh, 4.3 quadratic relations uh, in factored form. So learning goals here. Uh, we should be able to find the x-intercepts, vertex, and axis of symmetry of a quadratic relation that takes this form. Uh, you should be able to find uh, a quadratic equation um, in this form when you have the graph. So if I give you the graph, can you give me the equation in this form with A, R, and S filled in? Uh, can you solve problems related to quadratic uh, relations in factored forms? So we're going to look at some word problems too. Okay, so uh, what do I mean when I say form here? Well, quadratic equations can be written in this form, factored form or they can be written in this form, vertex form. Uh, there's another form called standard form that you'll worry about later on. Um, but basically, all quadratic equations can be written in these three forms. So they're just different ways of writing the same equation. Um, and you can convert from one to the other. Uh, we're not really going to do that too much in this class. Um, we'll do a little bit of that, and you're going to learn some of the skills that will allow you to do more of that. But um, just know that even though the equations can look different in these forms, uh, they, um, you can write any quadratic equation in these two forms. Okay, so, uh, for example, if you have y equals negative x minus 3 squared plus 4, um, so this is in vertex form, right, vertex is hk, so it would be at 3, 4. Um, you can also write this equation in factored form, and it looks like this. So you'll notice that the r and the s, the h and the k aren't really connected. You can't really get one from the other. But the a value here and the a value here are actually the same. Um, and that will always be true if the a means the same thing here. So if you have negative 1 there, you'll have negative 1 there. OK, so if you have a graph in this form, how do we deal with it? Or how, if you have an equation in this form, how do you deal with it? Um, well, let's figure out how to get the x-intercepts um, for a um, relation in this form. Because that's one thing that factor form is really useful for. You can see the x-intercepts very easily. OK? And you can do that because the x-intercepts are just these numbers, um, at least if it's simple like this. So uh, if you have x minus 1 and x minus 5, then this is kind of like h, right, in that it's opposite signs. So x equals 1 will be your, your x-intercept, and x equals 5 will be your other x-intercept. So if we graph this function, it looks like this. Okay, so we have an intercept at 1, 0, and an intercept at 5, 0. And those are our intercepts. So why does that actually work? Well, it works because this is factored form. So why do we call this factored form? Think about what factors are. Right? If you have 12, for example, the number 12, the factors of 12 might be 3 and 4. Um, so that just means that those two numbers multiply to give you 3 and 4. So in factored form, we have these three things all multiplied together. Um, and so you have essentially negative 1 times whatever this whole thing is times whatever this whole thing is. They're all multiplied. So what happens if you have three numbers multiplied and one of them is zero? Well, hopefully you know that the whole thing just becomes zero. So if either one of these brackets ends up being zero, the whole thing collapses to zero. Um, and that gives you y equals zero, right? Which is where your x-intercept is. It's at your height of zero. So you're trying to find the x value that will make this whole thing zero. So the x value that makes this bracket zero will be an x-intercept. And the x value that makes this bracket zero will be an x-intercept might seem simple so far, um, and this is how you can kind of do it more formally. So um, you look at each bracket individually, and you solve it algebraically, um, and you figure out what x values make things zero. Now you might think, well, this seems like a waste of time. I can kind of just look at that and see. Um, and yes, you may be able to do that. But if it gets more complicated, like in this version here, you might find that harder to do. OK, so. Um, how does it work in this case? Well, if you remember again that why this works is if any of these brackets is zero, the whole thing is zero. Um, you don't have to just kind of look at it and see it. You can take it apart. So you just take this bracket and move it over here. Um, and it looks like I've made a mistake there. That should be plus one. Uh, so then that should be plus one. And that should be negative when I bring it over. And so that'll be negative one fifth. Uh, all right, so x-intercepts at negative one-fifth. 
negative one fifth and negative three over two. Okay, so um, if you can't just see the by inspection that this is negative one fifth, just take it apart. No problem. You'll be able to solve it algebraically. Okay, so most of the time it's that simple, but there are a few special cases, um, and one of them is when you get something like this, because you'll notice you don't have two brackets, or at least you don't see two brackets here, right? You just have one bracket. And if you expand this, if you know that this is really just x minus 1 times x minus 1, okay, yes, I have two brackets, but they're both the same. So there's only one number that makes this 0, and that means there's only one x-intercept. And that does happen sometimes, because if you have a parabola where your vertex is actually touching the x-axis, that's the only place that the graph will contact the x-axis. And so you're only going to have one intercept. That does happen. Okay? Here you can clearly see you've got two. The graph touches in two places but it's possible for the graph to touch in only one place. All right, other thing to note is, is this vertex form or factored form? Well, in this case, it's actually both. So sometimes the equations will be the same. Case two, you might have no x-intercept, so be aware of that possibility as well. Uh, so if you have this case here, where you have a vertex that's above the x-axis, and the parabola goes opens up, it's never going to come down from the vertex, so it's never going to be able to touch that axis. Similarly, if you have a point below the axis and it opens down, it's never going to come up and touch the x-axis. The x -axis. So it's possible that you have no x-intercepts. That does happen. Um, now, you're not going to see that in factored form. Um, for the purposes of this class, there is no equation in factored form that will do that. Um, although technically there is. There, there is a way you can write an equation in this form. Um, so that it gives you this kind of graph. But it involves using something called complex numbers, which we're not going to worry about right now. Uh, you're not going to worry about that in this class, actually. Uh, but if you're interested in complex numbers, you can click here. It is, they're a very weird thing, but it turns out that they're pretty useful. Okay, so just be aware that parabolas can have one x-intercept or no x-intercept, as well as having two x-intercepts. Case three, what if you have an x-intercept at x equals zero? All right, so this isn't really a special case, but I included it in here because I've seen students make this kind of mistake quite a bit. Um, because if you get something like this, um, it's easy to be tricked because you might think, okay, well, my x-intercepts are in the brackets, so all I got to do is look for the brackets. Well, there's only one bracket here, so what does that mean? Well, you do have an x-intercept at negative 2, but think about this x here, right? This is not a parameter. This is not an a value. Right? Your a value is out here. It's 1. Uh, this is a variable, and so this is like another bracket, right? If x is 0, the whole thing becomes 0. So when you have an x outside by itself, or even if you had like a 3 there or something like that, the x-intercept there is 0. Um, and if you don't see that, you could write this as a bracket, x minus 0 if you wanted, right? x and x minus 0 are the same, so you could have another bracket there if you wanted it, right? You could write that as x minus 0. Um, so just don't be fooled, right? If you see an x by itself on the outside, that just means you have an x-intercept at x equals 0. Okay, let's look at some other questions. Um, suppose I want to uh, find the uh, axis of symmetry and vertex, and I'm given just this equation. So I put it on a graph here so you can see the intercepts, and we can find the intercepts the same way we previously did. In fact, this is the same question, right? Uh, so if we take this bracket and solve for x um, when this whole thing is equal to 0, we do the same thing for that, we get x intercepts at 1 and 5. So how can we get the vertex from that? Well, remember that parabolas are symmetrical. You have an axis of symmetry that runs through the vertex. Uh, and so what that means is that your axis of symmetry is right in the middle of those two points. It cuts the graph exactly in half. These two sides are mirror images, and so if you imagine this to be a mirror, if this distance here, uh, whatever this distance is to the mirror, you'll have the same distance behind the mirror. So essentially what that means is that this point here is the midpoint of these two. And so the x value of the midpoint will be the x value of the vertex and will also fit in with your axis of symmetry. So you just got to find the middle between 1 and 5. And we do that by taking an average. So 1 plus 5 divided by 2 will be 6 over 2, which will be 3. And you can see that's right in the middle. Okay, so the axis of symmetry is a, a, whole, a vertical line, rather. So remember, vertical lines have the equation where you have x equal to some number. In this case, it's x equals to 3. x equals to h, right, if you remember from the last lesson. So x equals to 3 is your axis of symmetry right here. 
and that means that the x coordinate of your vertex is 3. So if we want to find the vertex, we also need the y coordinate. But we already know that x is 3, and we already have this equation. So all you got to do is sub 3 into that equation, and that will give you your vertex. So we do that down here. We take 3 and we put it in. We get 2 times negative 2 uh, times negative 1. So we get 4 for our y value. So our vertex is at 3 comma 4. Our axis of symmetry is at x and th equals to 3. The vertex is a maximum and the graph opens down. And you can tell that by the equation uh, if you look at the negative we have out front there. Okay, let's look at the last example. We have a word problem here um, about the Dufferin gate, which if you've ever been to the CNE, um, that's located in that place. Uh, so it's a parabolic arch that's 20 meters tall and 22 meters wide. Sketch a graph of the arch with the left base located on the x-axis, four units to the left of the y-axis. Label the x-intercepts and the vertex. Okay, so it's pretty easy, but we have to understand the question. We want the base, which would be the bottoms of the arch, so there'll be two parts to the base. Um, the left base is going to be four units to the left of the y-axis. So we have the y-axis there, so our left base will be at negative four. It's to the left, so at negative four. So we have our y uh, x-intercept at negative 4, 0. The uh, arch is 22 meters wide. So the other um, base will be 22 meters away from this on the other side. So basically just negative 4 plus 22 gives you 18. So we know that the other end of the arch is at 18, 0. Okay, so we have the x-intercepts. How do we get the vertex? Well, this is the same question as the one before, right? You've got two points here. You want to find the vertex, which is exactly in the middle. So you take the average of negative 4 and 18. So negative 4 plus 18 divided by 2 is 7. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is 7. And we're given the y-coordinate of the vertex in the question because we're told that the arch is 20 meters tall. That means that this is the maximum. 20 meters is as tall as the arch gets. So that's going to be your vertex, 7, 20. All right, so we have that. Part B, we want to now get an equation in factored form. So how do we use this to get an equation? Well, we know the equation is going to take the form y equals a times x minus r and times x minus s. But remember that r and s are your intercepts. Uh, so you can think of the intercept as x equals to negative 4, right? Um, I'm just going to write that in here for now, just as rough well, kind of work. So if your intercept is x is at negative 4. Well, we want the bracket to be 0, so let's rearrange this and get 0. So I can move the 4 to this side to leave this side with 0, and I get x plus 4, and that's actually going to be my bracket. Right? You might just look at it and say, well, do I really need to do that? I, I know it's x minus um, r and r is negative 4, so x minus negative 4 is just x plus 4. I can, you can just see that. And the answer is yes. Uh, but again, remember when you get more complicated things, um, like we did way up here, um, being able to do this algebraically is useful. Okay. Other side is uh, x equals to 18. So again, we can bring that over. x minus 18 equals 0. And so our bracket will be x minus 18. So we have two brackets, x plus 4, x minus 18, but we don't know what a is. Okay, but finding a is easy. All you've got to do is sub in because you have another point. You have the vertex. You have an x and a y. Sub in your x, sub in your y as 7 and 20, right? Simplify. 11, negative 11. Uh, they multiply together to give you negative 21. And then we divide both sides by negative 21 to isolate a. So we get 20 over uh, 121, and that's a negative. Okay, so that's your a value, and you just plug it into the equation, and you're done. So um, that's all there is in uh, this topic. Uh, so we'll see you in the next one. Take care.